All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to be talking about some basic FEA or finite elemental analysis within FreeCAD. FreeCAD is an open source modeler, parametric modeling to be exact. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and so this is kind of our end goal. This is of the von Mises stress. Um, you can see the stress concentrations along this blade that I made. I'm not going to show how I modeled this blade, but I'll go over some basics. So with that said, let's just go ahead and go from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the all this analysis stuff right here. And we're going to start from the very beginning. Okay. All right, so the body's hidden. Let's unhide it. So this is what the wind turbine blade looks like. This is actually modeled from an actual airfoil called, I think it's, AI-18 or AL-18 or something. I forget the exact airfoil. But what I actually did was, um, let's see if I can zoom in on that sketch right here. Whoa, yeah. Let's hide the body real quick. Let's go to the top. So I took a wind turbine blade and cut it up in sections and then traced it. And this is the shape of the airfoil. So I imported this in and measured from this tip, uh, the leading edge to the trailing edge to be 28.25 millimeters. So I scaled the image in FreeCAD. And then what I did was I went ahead and traced it using um, some arcs and constraints. And then instead of putting some arcs here for the edges, it was creating issues with meshing. And so I just made them, since they're small enough, I just made them straight lines. It does not affect the FEA too much. It would affect CFD, any type of fluid dynamic um, airfoil testing uh, to test, you know, coefficients of drag and stuff. This, don't get rid of your your arcs here. But for displacement and stresses it's okay so I went ahead and that's how I created the blade and so if we look at the top you can see how there's an angle of twist if we look to the right you can see how there's angle of twist here and how the blade has a little bit of angle of twist there so let's go ahead and create the analysis for this. So the first thing you want to do is move into the FEM workbench and the next thing is select your body and we're going to need to create a mesh either with NetGen or GMesh. I'm going to use GMesh because I can control a little bit more. I need to move to first order and see what is going to work. So usually with second order and zero and zero for my max and minimum it crashes the system. So I'm going to start at 15 millimeters for the max size and 5 millimeters for the minimum size. I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so that makes a pretty decent mesh and it's first order. So that would be actually pretty good to use for FEA, but let's see if we can refine the mesh to be a little bit more accurate. So if I actually go to second order and I hit apply, it's going to give a warning, something to do about a Jacobian. Now I'm not going to explain what that is. But let's see if we can even refine this more. Let's go to first order and let's drop this down to 10 and drop this down to 3. Hit apply. Okay, so even better. No crashes, no warnings. Let's switch that to second order. Hit apply. And this time it actually liked it. Don't know the difference. Maybe it's because of the size. It was able to create a better mesh. So let's even drop this down further. Let's see if we can get away with 7 and 2. Okay. 7 and 2. Second order. Second order is just more accurate than first order. And everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to keep it at that. So I'm going to hit OK. So now we have our mesh. But now what do we do with it? So since we're in FEM, we need an analysis container. This is what holds everything. Drag your mesh into the analysis. You'll notice you have solver and your mesh. 
I'm going to go ahead and hide the mesh with spacebar so I can see the body of my object. Now I'm going to add constraints. This is the fixed constraint, so I'm going to hit add and select the faces I want to. You can see how it's putting little lock units in there. Hit OK. OK. Now let's do a force. Hit add. I'm going to select this face, this face, reverse direction, 1000 newtons, which is roughly 225 pounds of pressure. Hit OK. We're actually almost done. The last thing we need to do is define a material. So I'm going to use a custom material. Usually I like fiberglass. If we go to this E glass fiber, you'll notice how Young's modulus is zero. Everything is zero except the density. That means it's not going to work. So if we use task panel, we can switch things around to what we want based on another material. So material I'm testing is a um, a flexible plastic with carbon fiber in it and its density is 1280 kilograms per meter cubed and its Young's modulus is 193 uh, I mean 1.19.3 gigapascals so notice the name has changed to transient material that's okay if you know the other things you can put it in but this these two should be good enough. So I'm going to hit OK. Now everything should be good. I'm going to go ahead and hide the body, hide the constraints. I'm going to double click solver. I'm going to hit write INP file. This takes about 15 seconds. And then after that you're going to hit run calculix. And this will this, this will solve the um, this will give the solution. So write complete, hit it, and hopefully it'll finish with no red errors. Good, without any errors. Okay, close. Now you'll notice we'll see a body that's kind of more smooth shape. That is this pipeline. Go ahead and close it, or hide it, I mean, by spacebar. To see our actual results, double click CCX results. Pick one of our solution fields. Let's pick the von Mises stress. Okay, this is where the stress concentrations are along the blade. And if we do displacement in X, no, Y, you'll notice that it's got a negative 718 millimeters. For some reason, this material does not like to be flexed. So if I click show and I show the displacement, I click just scale factor of one. I mean, look at that. Under 225 pounds, that's what it's doing. So we're going to go ahead and, I mean, if you slide it all the way up, I mean, dang, you know, let's go back down to zero. Yeah, you can see some displacement a little bit there and there. Okay, so. On Mesa stresses, you can see the concentrations there. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. Go ahead and turn the pipeline back on. Double click it. And then what we're going to do is this coloring. We're going to go to field. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and if we pick, I don't know, whatever this something stress is, there's that one. Or we can do Von Mises, which is kind of the same thing. Different. Uh, fatigue theory, not fatigue theory, theory, stress theory, principal stresses. So you can pick one, I don't know, displacement, but I'm going to go with the von Mises, and then I'm going to hit OK. And that gives us at least the color mapping and our, of our stress concentrations of this blade. And it does follow the correct airfoil, and everything of this blade so don't worry about that let's go ahead and close that so that is basic FEA rundown 
on a complex shape. Now usually with the meshing you don't have to refine it like that. You only need to start doing that when you get in the complex shapes that have a lot of tiny faces and issues. For example, if I turn that off, turn the body back on, I know um, this one's actually pretty good. If we were to keep the arcs here, it would turn into an area where there's tons of tiny faces to create the arcs. And so it can run into issues trying to mesh that. But not bad. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned a lot.